here we go. <laughs> All right, welcome here, everyone. Let's start with a land acknowledgement. I'm a settler and on the swindled lands of Treaty One Territory, traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Inu, Oji Creek, Denny, and Dakota, and the birthplace of the Métis Nation. And uh, yeah, the colonized name for that is Winnipeg. And I think three of us are from Winnipeg, Lyle's not. Um, can you remind us Forgiven. your lands again? The lands you belong to, I think they're Soho, is that? Stol Stolo, the Stolo, Stolo Nation. Stolo Nation. The Upper Fraser Valley is a Stolo Nation. Mm. Um, just that, I think I mentioned this before, but they banned Chilliwack way back in the uh, 1968. Uh, a group of guys from Vancouver went up to Caldas Lake and were building a band. And uh, they liked the name Chilliwack because it meant the coming together of many rivers, many waters. So that's why that's how Chilliwack got to be the name of the band. Okay. Coming cool. together of many streams. But the Stolo Nation uh, is this region. Well, Winnipeg is kind of that way too. It's a uh derived from a Cree word for muddy waters. I can't pronounce it, it's min-nippy. <laughs> Winnipe, nim -win nippy min or something like that. I remember a trip to BC when I was, uh, this is before we had maps on our phones or GPSs, and I was just following the map to see when we were gonna get there. And I was watching, like we were following this, you know, a little creek, right? Because when you're going through the mountains, there's little creeks. And that creek joined another, which joined another, which joined another. And then there's the Thompson River. And then there's the Fraser River. And they kind of joined. And then by, by the time we got to Chilliwack, yeah, there's a lot of water. So uh, you're, not, uh, you're not kidding. <laughs> it is that way. Like, uh, all, those, all those waters uh, collecting there. All right. So I um, just want to thank uh, Black History Manitoba. We're using a... Uh, Zoom and we've got all the time in the world because they uh, gifted us with a pro Zoom account. So thanks for that. We don't need to rush like we did. Uh, it was really hard to get this done in, in 40 uh, minutes. And I also want to thank uh, Stephen Gray Eyes from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada who uh, popped up the, uh, pri the prize for tonight. So it is uh, this book here. Uh, oh, sorry. The, oh, yeah, it's kind of a sad, uh, sad story, but it's a good history to, you know, to take in and, and uh, hold in your heart. So uh, they came from the children from, from these folks here. And this, nice. there's, a lot, there's a lot in there. Wow. So it's slightly used because I, I did read it first. So. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I've had it. I've had it for a little while. All right. Um, but uh, normally the prizes come from from us. So if people would like to uh, chip in for prizes, we've got a Buy Me a Coffee page. And I just popped the link in the chat there. Um, as far as the quiz goes tonight, you're going to have to get logged into uh, CrowdPer by clicking on that link there. It'll ask you for your name. And that's so we can keep, so they can keep score. Uh, and, and speaking of score, um, this is open book trivia, so uh, you score points by answering quickly. Answering correctly is a given because we give you all the time uh, you need to learn the right answer. Okay, so that's, uh, that's important. So all the answers to the quiz are in this website here. That's in the chat as well. And that'll take you to the 94 calls to action. I also got this from Cameron Gray. So uh, I've got a hard copy, which makes it a little easier, but there's the same document that I just popped in the chat there. That is Nora. Nora's going to be walking back and forth. And back and forth. Hi, Nora. Yeah. Oh, I hear thunder. Oh, you hear thunder? I haven't heard yeah. thunder. I thought I heard of I heard of thunder thunder on Twitter, uh, but I have not actually heard any thunder myself. I heard, I heard thunder. Oh, and then... I heard it. I heard it. Oh, there you go. I heard thunder yeah. and then it went away and then it went to oh. my friend's and then it came back to me. And then I came back to him. So, but we've never heard it at the same time. 
Right. So tonight's going to be a little different. There's going to be a lot of time for uh, discussion between questions. We actually will have to because that's the way I, I laid the quiz out. So, um, any questions before you start? Yep. Nope. You guys are all, yeah, you're all good at this. You've been here before. Already, we're ready then. Okay, here we go. Question one The 94 calls to action are broken out into two main categories legacy and reconciliation, and then further into 22 subcategories. Which of the following subcategories is grouped into the reconciliation subcategory? Child welfare, justice, museums and archives, or health? Oops, I should have said category. <laughs> My bad. But uh, yeah, like I said, there's, uh, here we go here. So that would be a category, and this would be a subcategory. All righty. So when we got two answers, uh, we're ready to move on. And we have two answers? Oh, because you're not playing. Yeah, I'm not playing. Okay. I can teach Nora to play. <laughs> so yeah, if we have two, we're ready to move on to the, to the next question, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, I saw a lightning flash. Just yeah, oh I did. Boy. Yeah, and it's coming down, cats and dogs. Okay, we have two votes in. Neither are correct. I was going to say I think I clicked the wrong one. Oops. Oh. <laughs> the correct answer is museums and archives. That's true. That's under reconciliation. Just uh. That makes sense, and I I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, I'm just wild guessing here on this whole thing. I'm not looking anything up. Oh. Rebel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a rebel. Winging it. That is not my style. I'm all about the Google. <laughs> well, um, I guess we can read it after. <laughs> um, I don't know about the museums and archives, if, if that's going to be done well, but I kind of hope so. I, um, when I was at the Sacred Fire, I got to meet someone, uh, Geraldine McCannis. Um, just Google her name because uh, they're, they're badass Dakota warriors. <laughs> Interesting stories. Melissa Martin's written about them and uh, they've done some podcast stuff. But uh, Geraldine's actually in the business of repatriating artifacts and uh, there's a lot of stuff, uh, you know, that's in storage at the Manitoba Museum that really bothers them. And uh, hopefully these museums are done in a more collaborative way, you know. Um, okay, anyway, <laughs> question two. Question two. Many of these calls to action are directed towards government. Choose one which is not. 22, 92, 48, or 16. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we have two votes and you're both correct. All right, good job folks. Wild, did you go read for that one or did you guess that one too? I guessed that one and then I started Google. <laughs> I Google it. I, I then I started. Oh, hey, I can I can Google that, but yeah. I'm still oh, googling, so I'm slow. I'm so slow at googling. I'm better at guessing. Oh, you don't have to Google it. Uh, they're they're all on one website. There, um, they're all here. I guess. Are you using Zoom on your phone? Uh, no, I'm using my computer for the other two things. So yeah, trying okay. to yeah. trying to Google on my phone. Yeah. Well, don't don't Google. Just stay all all on this one one page because it's all uh, that link we put in the chat. Uh, Every, everything's on there. You don't need to bounce around uh, tonight. Um, so I'll read uh, number 22, and then maybe we can all take turns. Um, I thought we'd focus on the things that don't involve government because we're not in the government. <laughs> so we can call, I want to, you know, I want to learn about things that I can take action on, right? I'm not, uh, I'm not an MP or an MOA. Uh, so 22 is, um, reads as follows. We call upon those who can affect change within the Canadian healthcare system to reconcile the value of Aboriginal healing practices and use them in the treatment of Aboriginal patients in collaboration with Aboriginal healers and elders where requested by Aboriginal patients. So that is, I know that work is happening, but it's not marked off as completed yet, but I I know because I stumbled into an office in the basement of uh, Health Science Center. So they, they've got a department there. It's like deep in the tunnels. I was walking through the parkade in the winter one time. So. Um, someone want to read number 92? I knew my way there. Oh, Carrie? Just the first half, it's just the big part is good. You don't have to go through all three. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, we call upon the corporate sector in Canada to adopt the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as a reconciliation framework and to apply its principles, norms, and standards to corporate policy and core operational activities involving Indigenous peoples and their lands and resources. So this would include, but not limited to the following, and I'll just read the first section of each of these, which is commit to meaningful consultation, uh, building respectful relationships and obtaining the free prior and informed consent of Indigenous peoples uh, before we're uh, beginning projects. Um, ensure that uh, Aboriginal peoples have equitable access to jobs, training and education opportunities, provide education man for management and staff on the history of Aboriginal peoples, including the history and legacy of residential schools, the Un United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Treaties and Aboriginal Rights, Indigenous Law, and Crown Relations, and uh, building uh, intercultural competency, conflict resolution, human rights, and anti-racism. I was so happy to see that in there. Like, yeah. That, that's... Uh... A good thing. Lyle, Jen, you want to pick number up? 48? We call upon the church parties to the settlement agreement and all other faith groups and interfaith social justice groups in Canada who have not already done so to formally adopt and comply with the principles, norms, and standards of the United Nations declarations on the right of Indigenous peoples as a framework for reconciliation. This would include, but not be limited to, the following commitments ensuring that their institutions, policies, programs, and practices comply with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, respecting Indigenous Peoples' right to self-determination in spiritual matters, including the right to practice, develop, and teach their own spiritual and religious traditions, customs, and ceremonies consistent with Article 12.1 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, engaging in ongoing public dialogue and actions to support the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, issuing a statement no later than March 31, 2016, from all religious denominations and faith groups as to how they will implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. We call upon all, oh, sorry, I started 49. Okay. 
That's okay. We can, we can go more. Okay. You have the uh, document that well? Do you want to read number 16? Which number? 16. Find it. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There you are. We call upon post-secondary institutions to create university and college degree diploma commons programs in ab Aboriginal languages. That the one? Uh, yes, number sixteen. Yeah, that doesn't. Uh, yeah, it, they don't need to wait on the government for that. So, no, and I'm watching a hockey game in Cree, so that's you know. Nice. Yeah. You're doing something right. Yeah. Well, except it's a Leafs game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. And getting back to 16, that work is happening too, because I know there is uh, there are courses in Winnipeg. And, uh, and Brandon. In, uh, and Brandon, okay. I looked into the one, because I, I wouldn't mind learning one of the dialects. That you, um, I, I have some really old Cree books from mm -hmm. my dad, Cree language books, really old. <laughs> you still have them or are they with the- uh, I still have them. They're right on the them, shelf yeah. on the other yeah. side of the room. All right. Um, yeah, so those are those are things um, that we don't need the government to get involved in. And we'll get we'll get into some of those four later on more more specific. So, all righty, ready for Q3 here. In terms of proximity to those with authority to implement, which action item is most accessible to the average Canadian? 92.3, 10.4, 52.2, or 8? Kind of a confusing question. I had a hard time wording that properly, but you know, um, Joe Trucker, um, like, can he can he phone someone up and say, "Hey, look, we're we're not doing this," and it's it's in this book. You know, like well, most of the stuff, uh, you can't have that conversation with anybody with the authority to do something. But there are some things where you can say, "Hey, we're we're not doing what's in this book." Uh, so, and there's one in particular. That I've got in mind. The nice thing about this quiz is you can just you look up the numbers and scratch them off. Okay, nope, nope, nope. Yep. And eventually you'll find one that you want to, that you're confident enough to click on. By the way, the lightning round, I, I doubled the stakes for the lightning round. So if you're getting behind, oh. don't worry. Well, lots of points for the lightning round. And there's more than one right answer for the lightning round. I kept blinking and then touched my face, so my eyes will water. And I'll, have a hor I'll have a horrible night. I should get the bag. Remember the bag that I had at the beginning of COVID two years ago? I actually got this big paper bag and put it on my, and I wrote, don't touch your face on the back of the bag, and I like, cut out eye holes, and then where the mouth was, I, I, I drew a mask on there with a grin. This was before masks were even a thing anywhere, right? And I was walking around with it with this bag, and I was ahead of my time. I just, I was, was going to say, I feel like I remember this. Yeah. I like how you said, remember at the beginning of COVID years ago. I mean, it's it's been two years. It's been a long time. Okay, we have two votes in. One is correct. The correct answer was A, 92.3. That was not my answer. <laughs> well, maybe there's more than one correct answer, but you don't get points, Gary. 
what, what do you think? Maybe you do have access we don't have access to. Like this is kind of a perspective thing, right? So I feel like by the time I probably got to D, which was the answer I selected, I probably forget forgot what A was, and then I just clicked on it. <laughs> okay, the struggle is real. <laughs> yeah. A is uh, we call upon the federal government to eliminate the discrepancy in federal education funding for First Nation children being educated on reserves and those First Nation children being educated off reserves. So he, he knows some uh, NDP people in Canada, so maybe he's <laughs> got, got more access. But uh, I think A was the one. Is A the what I what I said was correct? I just gotta look it up again. Yeah. And I found this one, I think this would pretty much apply to everybody because I I can have this conversation with uh, the people I work for. And I, I will, but I won't I don't want to give away the answer to something else. So I, I won't go on about that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just read that again. Uh, this came up, uh, uh, I think Carrie read this. Um, under business and reconciliation, uh, the third item here uh, is we're called to action to provide education for management and staff on the history of Aboriginal people, including the history of leg legacy of residential schools, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Treaties and Aboriginal Rights. Indigenous law, Aboriginal crown relations. Um, this will require skills based training and intercultural competency, conflict resolution, human rights, and anti racism. Now, so if you're not getting this training at work, because the company you work for or have not responded yet to what they're called out to do. And so, alrighty, onwards. Okay. Before. Moving on. Question four. Has your employer come through on 92.3? Yes, no, yes, but half-assed, or not available, retired, et cetera? Not the correct answer here. Just vote quick, you don't have to look it up. You know where you work. Or you Just work. click. Yeah. Just click. Okay, we've all voted. Okay, I'll uh, talk about mine first. I, If I was playing, I would vote C, uh, yes, but half-assed, uh, because there was some... Uh, uh, there was some training, but it wasn't offered to everybody because uh, uh, it kind of came up. I don't know if it was not well planned, but all of a sudden, oh, there was, oh yeah, trainings this week. Who's who's not uh, who's not working out on site? Okay, well, you're in the office. Uh, do you have time? You can come. And I would have really liked to have taken that, but I, I missed it. So I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna ask them to do it again. What I'm gonna do is offer to do it again and, and arrange it. You know, like I find. Uh, that works better if you offer to help than say, hey, you, you're screwing up. Like <laughs> Maybe they don't have time, but if I offer to help, it, that, that relieves that problem. So I'm gonna see if I can organize the next one and give some proper notice so everyone who wants to be there can be there. Um, what did you all say? Tell me I about uh, yes. your situations, I'd be interested. I said, yes, um, we have done... <laughs> Uh, yep, we've done at work, we've actually done two uh, separate trainings. One was, I think it was last summer. Um, I can't remember summer 2020 or summer 2021. I feel like it might have been 2020. Um, and it was a, a course called Decolonize First uh, with this wonderful, uh, wonderful woman named Tatalia Michelle Nahani. And um, and it had like a like this really good workbook and um, you know, we broke into small groups and kind of had discussions. A lot of the time it was a very like, uh, you know, very safe and welcoming place to kind of start that journey in, in learning, which was really, really good. Um, and then uh, this past winter, um, we did a um, ind indigenous cultural safety training course, uh, mostly focused around healthcare. Um, and it is called uh, Sanius Indigenous Cultural Safety, and it was just like all, uh, it was all online, and apparently it uh, takes, a, it's, it's apparently difficult to get into because there's so much demand for folks to get into the course right now, which is really good to see. I think, um, I'm just looking to see here, make sure I don't misspeak, but uh, yeah, it's run by uh, BC Provincial Health Services Authority. And uh, so that's how we 
got involved in doing that training. But yeah, both of them were really good and, and uh, started really good discussions as well. But yeah. You Zoom froze a little bit when you were saying where you work. Do you want to highlight that? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, this is going to go yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I work for uh, the BC Hepatitis Network, and uh, I live in Winnipeg, though, so it's nice so that I get to see kind of multiple uh, multiple sides to the work that's going on from both the Manitoba perspective and, you know, what's happening in in BC, so. Yeah, that's interesting that it's a BC thing because, um, you know, I'm connected with PHSA, Provincial Health Services Association, or wherever, whoever they are. Uh, running our BC ambulance service, we've never had any courses based on uh, dealing with situations with indigenous um, patients. And maybe it's just kind of more more technical with what we do, but we've never had any anything with that. And uh, next week, my answer would have been D, but I was a no today because I, I can't think of any course that we've ever been offered um, dealing with anything to do with indigenous or any other kind of racial issues. Yeah, I, I think too, the Sanyas course probably would be at least somewhat relevant, regardless of kind of what role um, you're taking, especially like, you know, running a, an ambulance service, um, because it was, you know, people who worked in various sectors of healthcare who were doing the course, right? So it was people providing direct care, people who were in, uh, I think, in administ administrative roles. So it was, you know, kind of all over the place, but it was really, you know, interesting to see that because, and sometimes people would answer the questions and say, you know, this doesn't apply to my work and that's fine, but they at least got to read through the experiences that other people had had. Yeah, it does It does completely apply to our work though, because we yeah. respond to, to uh, you know, to residential uh, reserves and different things like that. So we're in, in a, it's, it's a cultural difference. And and many of us are indigenous to start with. I got indigenous co-workers, but still, there's a different aspect to uh, caring for someone who's got a little different cultural history, and Absolutely. we've never never had anything. Hmm. I'll uh, I'll pop the link to this course in the chat just if people want to. You can't really see a whole lot, but you might be able to you know Google it and and read a little bit more about what's uh, what was yep. offered in that one. And I'll uh, I'll link to uh, to tell you Michelle's work too because it's also really really good and really well done cool yeah you're okay retired, right, Ken? ready for five gotcha <laughs> one two three that'll go that'll be a yes i'm retired <laughs> choose a call to action which was implemented in 2021 15 33 80 or 94 You'll have to use your memory a little bit. I mean, the, the history of 2021 is not in this book, but it was something that happened last year. Though. You're afraid that some things would happen. <laughs> we have two votes. Both were correct. Sorry. Wrong. Both, Both votes were correct. Were correct. Hey. Recent enough to remember. Yeah. Did did both? Uh, can you show the answers? I mean, uh, oh, sorry. Show I what can. the votes were actually. Because um, we had more than right, one correct answer here. Oh. I'm just curious if everyone picked the same. There we go. Okay, so we, we have both not. correct. So we had A, number 15. I'll just look that up quickly here at 15. We call upon the federal government to appoint in consultation with Aboriginal groups, an Aboriginal languages commissioner. 
commissioner should help promote Aboriginal language and report on the adequacy of federal funding of Aboriginal initiatives. And number 80 was, I think that was the holiday. Let me see here. Yes. Um, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation to honor survivors, their families, and communities. So that, uh, that happened last year. There's a lot of progress uh, last year. Uh, 94 was that new um, part of the citizenship oath that was updated. Okay, so there is an acknowledgement of, um, of the treaties. And as a Canadian citizen, their new Canadian citizens are affirming that they are responsible for fulfilling the treaties. All right. Well, that's well, a, in that's the lead. <laughs> and it's close. Very close. close. All right. Question six. Which of, sorry, which one of the calls to action is directed to interfaith social justice groups, among others? 45, 46, 47, or 48? Both votes are in. Both votes are correct. It was D, 48. It was D. And I really like that it, it's in there. Like, um, there's a lot of stuff here directed towards, you know, churches and faith groups, right? Because of, and which makes sense, right? Because of the, the whole, uh, his, their active, aggressive participants in colonization and in their residential schools as well, right? So that makes sense. But then they added um, social justice groups at the end. And then interfaith to me that means social justice groups that have people that from more than one faith working together yeah. towards social, social justice. I would kind of wish it was just social justice groups because then the, that then we could apply this to all the nonprofits because uh, there's people who have no faith right who are also working towards social justice. But uh, so I, I just uh, kind of I like that 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 was in there. And again. This is around the uh, UN declaration, right? That uh, has come up again and again and again tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of curious about how many faith groups that were involved in um, residential schools, et cetera, or like them actually acknowledge, actually understand that they actually were in the wrong at the time, including us. Me, my family, my history. Uh, kind of curious if they actually realized that um, what they did was needed to be uh, responded to in a more positive way. Well, I can I can speak to that because I'm in your family and I talked to actually talked to them last month. I was getting ready for a reconciliation circle and I thought I should just close this loop with that organization. And um, there is one in here about um, legal set legal settlements with peoples who weren't whose residential school experience wasn't part of a lawsuit. Okay. Does that make sense? There is uh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because there was a pretty strict definition of what a residential school was and what wasn't. And there were a lot of people that were excluded from uh, the reparations and the whole process. And there's, uh, there's a call uh, to people that uh, were let off the hook to put themselves on the hook, you know, take that upon themselves to, to go uh, find these people and settle these outstanding legal claims. There we go. Choose a call to action, which was implemented sometime between 2015 and 2019. 
13, 38, 41, or 85? Again, there's more than one great answer here. Guesses again. Hey, Carrie, there's more than one right answer, so hurry up. We've got four minutes <laughs> to find one of the right answers. Here's a call to action that was implemented one time between 2015 and 2019. I'm going to my, I'm walking to my power cord. Oh, God. I'm going to leave you again. So it could be 13. We call upon the federal government to acknowledge our Aboriginal rights, include Aboriginal language rights. It could be 38. We call upon the federal, provincial, territorial, and Aboriginal government to commit to eliminating the over representation of Aboriginal youth in custody over the next decade. Could we have both years. votes in. Oh, here we go. And they are both correct. Alrighty. Hooray. I think all four were correct. Is that right, Ken? Uh, no. No? Oh, okay. Uh, B was not correct, but no, A, C, not. and D were. All right. Okay, let's... Uh, Oh, my mouse. Okay, here we go. Okay. Are we ready for question eight? Yes. Ready. Hopefully without a power outage this time. In regards to number 80, on which day is the new national holiday? July 30th, August 30th, September 30th, October 30th. <clears throat> we have both both in and they are both correct it's september 30th there is remember what we did last year <laughs> yes we had that picnic and then we uh, went to the museum after so um Yes. I'd be down for that again. Absolutely. Me All too. right. Uh, or maybe the, there'll be a new museum. Because that was, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, the Geraldine Mechanics, uh, Mechanics Museum. All right, what's Q9? 
You have the power to wave a magic wand and implement one of these. Which call to action do you choose? Choose quickly for points, but re be ready to explain why. Oh, there are boy. many choices here. <laughs> they are all correct. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um. While you guys are thinking, uh, I'm going to tell you what I chose. Uh, if I can find it again. Yes, number 55. We call upon all levels of government to provide annual reports or any current data requested by the National Council for Reconciliation so they can report on the progress towards reconciliation. The reports or data would include, but not be limited to, number of ab Aboriginal children in care compared with non-Aboriginal children, reasons for apprehension on total spending on preventative care services, uh, comparative funding for education of First Nation on and off reserves, you know, every year, like I put out the numbers, okay, this is how, how much better we are this year than last year. Educational and income attainment of Aboriginal people to compare the non-Aboriginal progress on closing the gaps, uh, progress on eliminating over representation of Aboriginal children in youth custody, progress on reducing the rate of criminal victimization, and progress on reducing overrepresentation of Aboriginal people in the justice and correctional systems. So, if I could pick anyone, um, I would pick that just because having the government put out these reports hopefully would lead to more awareness around this. And you don't want to be writing, uh, yeah, we, we did nothing last year and we also did nothing this year. If, if you're the person uh, that has to, admit that every year um, um hopefully things would change i i might be naive but anyway that's the one i picked uh who wants to go next or unless you're still thinking that's fine you got two minutes and 41 seconds i'm still trying to scroll to see if they've both voted no i haven't voted yet <laughs> a lot okay. of scrolling there jen sorry <laughs> that's a lot I started with uh, right at the top of the list, and as soon as it, as soon as it said um, it's number one, I went with number one right away because we call upon uh, the federal, provincial, territorial, Aboriginal, and Aboriginal governments to commit to reducing the number of Aboriginal children in care, and then goes on to many different why ways why, and uh, Catherine and I did foster care for a few years and it just um austin anthony jordana alan and uh, sean all aboriginal and brought into the um system just because of um for different reasons that if they were another um you know, another history, another social history or birth history, they probably would have been just left to be on their own. And and people would ask us, so we would say, yeah, we, uh, we're foster parents. So, oh, are they Aboriginal? Just It's just the assumption that if they're Aboriginal kids are going to be in foster care. And that, that hurt me. But anyway, so I picked one. That's an important one, and maybe that's why it's first. Like it's, uh, you know, the, the whole, a lot of the trauma around residential school, I don't want to trivialize this by talking about it here, but, you know, it's around the families being secured. And that, that is still going on, even though these schools are closed. Yeah, they, they, they took children away from their parents for several generations, put them in residential schools and then when they got out of residential schools they couldn't figure out why they don't know how to parent <laughs> they were parenting pretty good for generations before uh, we showed up at the uh, east coast mm -hmm. and carrie you chose 55 yeah i think there's there's lots of um pieces in 55 but i think um you know it, it captures a lot of different 
aspects, you know, including um, the, uh, you know, the care system. Um, and like when I was thinking about this one, though, it was um, uh, mostly focused on the justice system and one, like how um, it uh, over, you know, over represents uh, Indigenous people who are incarcerated. Um, but also like that is probably linked to a variety of of other factors due to colonization. I mean, it also um, mentions educational and income attainments um, uh, compared to non-Aboriginal people. And, you know, so it's like everything kind of, um, I think lots of things sort of filter into that, um, why Indigenous people are overrepresented in the justice system. And um, I think there's lots of ways to <coughs> fix that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, lots of, pieces in 55 for sure but yeah I got, okay I so we got to talk later we have come to the lightning round have we not we okay. have um okay we could check the score okay <laughs> okay all right someone's gonna win this which is uh, a Lucky. hard thing to do, yeah. actually, but uh, get ready. Okay, here we go, guys. You know the drill. Ready. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is referred to many times in this document. Should we do an event based on this declaration? Yep. Nope. Going to Nadia's party tonight? I don't think the snow will ever melt. <laughs> I was playing, I would choose C because I am going to Nadia's party. Nice. Yeah, I feel I should make an appearance. Uh, I would but... choose A and D. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say A and D are my answers as well. Okay. It's raining cats and dogs and I can still see massive amounts of snow out the window, so. This GIF in the side here is great. It's not no. just lightning, it's fighting lightning. I'm super enjoying this. <laughs> Yeah, and can you show us the vote before you uh, show us the score? Sure can. Uh, okay, to both of you said yes, so we will do one on that declaration. Yeah, because that's the one that actually kind of applies to me a little bit when I look at my situation in here. So, uh, and um, to be honest, I've only read that three times, and I, I couldn't answer a question about it right now. You know, so. And two of those times were uh, this week. Harry! Oh my God! Woo! <laughs> Has go. it ever been that close? I think it's been that close once, yeah. 34 points? Yeah. That's crazy. That's Not crazy. Ready. Wow, that was really close. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought you were going to take it, Lyle. I did too. Well, I, I must... Yeah. I think oh, yeah. Lightning round. <laughs> Too long yeah, reading the questions on the lightning round. Well done. Thank yeah, you. 